Okay, this video is going to show how you can use MOA framework to run Sobel sensitivity analysis. Of course, sensitivity analysis is not the focal point of the of the framework in general, but it's in there and it's it's a useful feature. Um, it's good to know how to use for model diagnostics and, and so on. So the first thing that you're going to need is just a text file that contains the upper and lower bounds of your parameters. So I'll show you what mine looks like here. So you have three columns. Uh, the first column is just a string uh, showing the name of the parameter. Of course you don't want to have spaces in there, that's why there's all these hyphens. Uh, the second column is the lower bound of that parameter, and of course the third column is the upper bound of that parameter. So this assumes that your parameters are uh, floating point, not, not the numbers. So you can have, I think here there's about 30 parameters, um, but I mean you can go up to, to quite a few parameters if you're interested. So once you have this file, you can generate Sobel samples from it. Um, so I, the, the command is kind of long, so I have a script here that does it called generate samples. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so this this is not a cluster submission script. This is just a regular bash script to be run from the command line. So this is the command to use that file that I just showed you and, and generate some Sobel samples. So you're calling Java. Of course, the class path is an MOE framework as usual. This is an older version, but it, Sobel hasn't changed in the framework. Um, the, the class, the specific class that you're calling is the sample generator. So it's all the way down here in uh, analysis, sensitivity, sample generator. The options you can pass in, so the, the M flag is the mode. Here, the Saltelli mode is from um, the, the book Global Sensitivity Analysis, the primer by Saltelli et al. Um, which, which specifies a certain way of doing the cross sampling for the Sobel samples. The N flag says how many uh, initial samples to work off of, and then the P flag says where is the um, the parameter bounds file that, that I just showed. Notice it's a little tricky here. Um, the N flag does not say how many samples total to run because it comes up with this many samples, uh, but then it does all the cross sampling between the two matrices. And, um, basically you have to follow through how, how the method actually works, but you end up with much more than, than just 1,000 samples in this case. I believe it's um, in this case, it would be 1,000 times the number of parameters plus 2, I think, but I'll, I'll check that in a minute here. So this is what the generate script looks like. Uh, you can also, using the dash O flag, you can tell it what file to print to. Uh, but here what I'm doing is uh, so I'm just calling generate samples and then piping it to a file. I don't actually want these, so let's jump. This will take a minute to run and print everything. I'm guessing it's the print everything that's taking a while and not the running itself. There we go. Okay, so it finished printing. So this is going to be a pretty big file. Yeah. So I don't want to actually open this. It should, every row of that junk txt file is going to be a parameter set. So it should have the number of parameters that you have columns and then every row is a sample. So we can see how many lines are in the file. 62,000. So the number of parameters two. So in this case it was 2n times the number of parameters plus 1. I'm sorry, I had that wrong before. Anyway, you can see it's, I, I gave an n value of 1,000 and it says 62,000 samples, so quite a few samples. So now you have the samples. Uh, and this is set up to work in sort of a modular way, so you can do the sampling up front, we have the sample file, and now for whatever model you're running, you can take that sample file and read it into your model, run the simulations, and then print your output to a file. So you're going to print out whatever you want to measure the sensitivity of. Uh, it could be an error metric, um, just whatever in your model you want to measure the sensitivity of. And you do it in the same sort of format, so every sample will have one line of that output file. You can have multiple outputs in the same file. 
just make sure that every simulation corresponds to one row of that file. And then the, the, the last part of the process is to actually take that output and calculate the sensitivity indices. So I have another script here to do that, calculate SI. So this I actually set up to be a cluster submission because it can it can take a while. Most of the time spent is actually doing the file I.O. So you're going to have all this model output that you want to measure the sensitivity of, and it takes a while to read it back into memory. So that's where a lot of this time is actually spent. Uh, but don't think that it necessarily takes 12 hours just because that's what I'm requesting here. It, it didn't take nearly that long. I just uh, wanted to be safe. So here I was printing um, 17 model outputs in that output file. So what I'm going to do is, I mean, you have to calculate the sensitivity indices for each output one at a time, so you can loop over them and call the same command. That's kind of the logic that I'm following here. Um, so the, the command is, uh, I'm timing it here too, the command is this, Java uh, analysis sensitivity Sobel analysis. And the M flag tells it which column of your output file to, to measure the sensitivity of. So every objective value has a column and you tell it which column you're doing this time. Again, I'm looping through the different objectives, so all of them are going to um, be run here at some point. Dash R is the number of bootstrap resamples to calculate confidence intervals on the sensitivity indices. Of course, you want to know this is the sensitivity in index plus or minus a certain amount. The dash I flag says uh, what is the input to this the Sobel analysis class. In this case, the input to Sobel analysis is the output from the model. So the previous step feeds into this one. Right? The dash p flag says what the parameter bounds file is. The only reason it needs that is because it gives you output that um, it'll print the parameter names in the output. Uh, and then the dash o flag tells it where to print the Sobel indices. So that's the output file to print the indices in. And it'll give you a nice write-up of the first order, second order, and total order Sobel sensitivity indices. Okay, so it's broken down into a three-step process. The first step is sample, um, sample generation. The second step is run your model with the samples and print the output. The third step is take that output and do the actual Sobel analysis to get the indices. All right, thanks for watching.